we're heading to the drive-in for a special sinful edition of Marketplace. That's right, Canada. We're ready to screen the biggest sins some companies commit when trying to get a hold of your cash. We buy into it, but what are we really buying into? You're about to find out. So grab some popcorn and join us for the premiere of the seven sins of the marketplace. Hey, David. Charlie, how are you? Good. Asha, hey. Hey, hey David. How How's cool is this drive-in? This one's been here since the 1950s. No it's way. amazing. Yeah. And a snack bar. So one of our goals here is to help people save some money. That's right. This show is about all the lessons we've learned since joining Marketplace. Things to help you make your consumer choices. Like when a company tries to sell you something you don't really need. We're calling that the sin of creation, and it kicks off our seven sins of the Marketplace. We've seen the sin of creation all over social media and in almost all of our buzzkill stories. Like this one about UV wands. Pitched as the perfect touch-free solution to cleaning virtually any surface or object from bacteria and bugs. What we basically see on the market is that the wands do not achieve the uh, level of disinfection that they might claim. That's because devices could be using the wrong kind of light, or light that is not strong enough to actually kill potentially harmful bacteria or viruses living on your cell phone or keys. The UV light they're turning to is probably going to give them a false sense of security. When it comes to protecting you from germs and viruses, experts say you don't need to shell out on a pricey device. Good old-fashioned cleaning products will be just fine. This is a lifesaver. Spoiler alert, this next sinful creation is not a lifesaver. Goddess Vaginal Detox Pearls. It plays on an out-of-date concept that women need to keep their vagina clean. Besides ridding you of bacteria, these tiny baggies of Chinese herbs claim to help with fertility, even rid women of past sexual trauma and bad boyfriends. Your vagina is a self-cleaning oven. You should just let it be and it will take care of you. It says in here, fructus cochiae, motherwort, angelica, rhizymal borneal. Is there anything in here that sounds like it should go? Nothing in there should go in your vagina at all, none of it. It's most likely going to damage the mucosa, the good bacteria, increase your risk of getting sexually transmitted infections. So when shopping, remember, the company probably needs you to buy it more than you need to use it, which is why the sin of creation comes in at number seven on our list. Thank you. Next up, a sin that exposes our privacy, from identity theft to smart home devices. We've uncovered lots of things that can make us vulnerable. Even these little guys. Sure, they make it super convenient when it comes to locking our car doors, but we've also shown you they can make it easier for thieves to steal our cars. And just about everyone has one of these, but it's the apps on our phones that can be really scary as you're about to see with the sin of exposure. We know a lot about smartphones, and our phones know even more about us. How much of your personal info is really exposed? And what are the consequences? To answer that, we created our very own app with similar terms and conditions to popular ones out there. A lot of times we'll download an app thinking it's a flashlight, thinking it's a game, thinking it's a social media app, but it's so much more bundled into it. We found a few volunteers to download what they think is a horoscope app. You willing to try it out? Yeah, sure. Oh, sure, I could do that. Now what? What's, what's happening? I think I have to click or agree when I read those terms and conditions. I'm what? sorry, you didn't have to give me a second here. Are you reading that quickly? Skimming, I'm skimming. Skimming, okay, okay. What no one realized, they gave us permission to access their photos, call logs, text messages, location, even their microphone. Okay, 
Let's check out the call logs for one of our testers. And there's some phone calls to mom. Jason, what do we got here? Sticking out his tongue. Fun selfie. One of the things we can do is record a photo from their actual phone. Let's take a look at this. Wow. Yep, that's our tester. We reveal what we know to our testers. Text messages, we had access to that. Everything? Oh you my. You needed a lab coat. Did you end up yes. finding one? Yeah. You did, hey? Yeah, I did. I have no idea what to say. I noticed that there's someone you message all the time called Snoop Dodd. Yeah. It's kind of creepy. We also had access to your microphone. We could have turned it on, listened to your conversations, even recorded them. We didn't. Now I'm just going through my head. What else was I doing on my phone throughout the week? And I know it wasn't all good. What's going through your mind right now? Uh, I have no idea. I guess I have access to all my information. You guys could have taken pictures at the wrong time. I could have listened to conversations that were private. We didn't dig too deep, but what are some companies doing with all this info? There's a lot of unanswered questions as a consumer as to what is gonna happen with our data, how long it's gonna be kept, and if there's any way to delete it in the future. So remember, when using apps, you don't know where your personal info could end up. That's why the sin of exposure is number six on our list. Our next sin is a pretty serious one, the sin of neglect, when companies put our well-being at risk. We've seen it time and again with things like kids' jewelry made from toxic materials. Or trampoline parks that ignored dangerous behavior. But nowhere is the sin of neglect more clear than in many of our long-term care homes. Long before COVID, we were inside long-term care, seeing the problems that would come to make the pandemic worse. Oh, help me, help me, help me. So few staff run off their feet. Five minutes, I don't have two minutes, yeah. one. Our hidden camera capturing workers warning government inspectors. This is one of your inspectors saying, we're fighting for that, one of the people who reports to you. Marketplace confronted governments on why just three staff sometimes care for 30 vulnerable seniors. There's no legal floor. There's no minimum number of But there's of ratio. a legal requirement that that staffing ratio, that staffing uh, plan has to reflect the, uh, the nature of the residents that live there. Even as 3,500 die from COVID in Ontario homes, we reveal they're still breaking the law. That's just a crazy statement. They're not yes. interested in complying with the law. Mm -hmm. It's the law. And we show homes failing to follow infection rules. He goes, this is huge. It's a huge bed sore. Um, I walk towards her room and I can smell the, the, the bed sore. It's that bad. And he goes, it's down to the bone. And he said to me at that point that this is life threatening in a system where failure has no consequence for homes that screw up repeatedly. We demand answers. Minister, just to be clear, um, there have been thousands of instances under which... These care homes have broken the law for things like abuse and neglect, and virtually none of them have ever faced consequences. And we've heard the torment of families when governments failed to act. So this means to tell me that everything my mom endured it's all for nothing. Governments repeatedly told there weren't enough staff, that care homes were failing to follow the rules to stop infections. They were on a cliff. <laughs> COVID pushed them over. The sin of neglect comes in at number five on our seven sins of the marketplace. Sometimes you wonder how we fall for things, but let's face it, marketing can be pretty persuasive. And there's lots of companies trying to seduce us with their advertising. For instance, DNA kits that promise to give you more answers about your ancestry than they can actually deliver. We're talking about the sin of seduction. 
Millions of people are buying kits curious about their ancestry. You can pinpoint specifically? Companies promise their tests will reveal where you come from or who your people are. It's really nice. I have some kind of a connection to my background. We put five DNA kit companies to the test to see just how accurate they can be. Fill the tube with saliva to the black wavy line. Oh, and there's a twist. Cheers. Okay. Don't touch it, though. My sister Carly's in on uh, this, too. I feel like I'm on law and order. Yeah, see you It's DNA science. We're identical twins. Our ancestry should all be the same, all right? right? Okay. But when we get our results... OK. Ready? One, two, two three. three. What? 39% Eastern Europe and Russia. No way. What is your Did you say? get the exact same? With some company results, our identical DNA does not lead to identical ancestry. French and German. What? Oh, I don't have that. You don't have that at all? No. I'm 3.8% oh. broadly European. Well, I'm 12.7. <laughs> Wow, that's a big difference. Yeah. Our results even stunned this team of experts. So the fact that they present different results for you and your sister, I find very mystifying. We spend m many hours, we try to understand why they might be different, but we cannot. I think the, the clean thing to say is we don't know how they did the calculations, but we strongly think that you and your sister should get the same report, end of day. Companies tell us even tiny variations in DNA can lead their formulas to give us different estimates. So if you're feeling drawn in by fancy marketing and claims that are too good to be true, watch out for our number four sin on our list, the sin of seduction. Yum, yum. It's time for a tasty and refreshing snack. Grab a sinful snack. Our countdown of seven sins of the marketplace will be right back. Do you have a story you think Marketplace should investigate next? Tell us all about it on email, Twitter, and Facebook. We're counting down the seven sins of the marketplace, and this next sin is one we come across all the time. Seems there's no shortage of people out there happy to fake it so they can make it. We've seen everything from fake cures to fake degrees, from fake universities. But there's one area in particular we've seen repeated attempts at fakery, and that tops our sin of deception. Online reviews are everywhere. We rely on them to help us decide where to spend our money. But how easy is it for a company to fool us with fake reviews? To find out, we invent a phony food truck called Cheese Daw, with its own website, Facebook page, and lots of tricked out photos. Then we hire people to say how much they like our truck on different review sites. I love getting lunch at Cheese Daw. They're fast, they're friendly, and they make the best grilled cheese sandwich around. We show just how easy it is to manufacture a good reputation, even for a phony business. A few years later, the problem of fake reviews is still there. And this woman is too. Hi there, my name is Suzanne. Hi, I'm Tessa Daly of Tampa, Florida. Hey everyone, it's Jennifer. She seems to have made thousands of testimonials. I'm a certified financial advisor and I'm a designer and I'm a teacher. And even poses as various experts to push diet supplements. Hi, my name is Maria J. Clifford, Gina Parker, Jessica Moore. I'm a licensed dietitian at the Kennedy Health Institute in Washington, at the Herald Institute here in Washington. I'm also the mother of two, and I'm also the mother of three children. But when we try to track her down, she's hard to find. So we use some deception of our own. We order another fake testimonial and send a scarf for her to wear in it. When she picks up the package at the post office, we move in. This is CBC, and we want to talk to you about the testimonials you sell on Fiverr. Oh, I'm going to pass, thanks. Why? I just don't have anything to say, and I really don't want to be Why on do you do right so now. many fake reviews? I don't even know who you are. Why do you do so many fake reviews? Aren't you misleading people? I don't even know who you are. Get away from my car. 
Why won't you talk to us? What about the people that believe your reviews and trust you? She eventually does talk to us and denies her involvement in selling testimonials, but then defends the practice. Every time a commercial is on, it is advertising, okay? Yeah. Spokespeople, advertising people all over the world, making claims, making statements. Can I tell you that what you're doing is unethical, possibly illegal? I, nothing I have done or anybody I know in that marketplace is doing anything wrong, okay? They are earning money, they are doing things, and I have nothing to say. Get that microphone So you out don't of my think room. what you're doing is wrong? You don't think giving false are testimonials... Are you the moral police? Are I'm you asking you. I'm asking you, you what you think. I'm asking your thought. No, I have no comment on I'm that. I'm asking your thoughts, I Suzanne. No I want no. to know if you, you think know that, that giving me. false testimonials online, if that's not Get wrong. Get your microphone out of my car, which is private property. Get it out of the whole point of online reviews is to create what's called social proof. We're more likely to buy something if others around us agree it's a good decision. And when people try to fake us out, that trust is broken, which is why deception comes in at number three on our seven sins of the marketplace. From the sin of deception to destruction, waste is next on our countdown. We've seen too many companies that create products or policies with little thought for the environment. Take plastic. We've shown you how hard it is to avoid at the supermarket, even in your bottled water. But the biggest eye-opener for us came when we traveled across the world to find out what really happens to our recycling. Whoa. Big, big, big mountain of plastic in there. Malaysia, a dumping ground for Canadian plastic. Holy moly. Look at how big this is. Just take a look. Look how far it goes. This is just one dump, one dump. A vast field of plastic, two stories high, that's cheaper to send here rather than recycle at home. This is Canadian Tire. This is Marketplace IGA. This is Real Canadian Superstore. Compliments, water, the dollar store. A sea of Canadian plastics now likely to be dumped or burned. Now, I don't dare to deep breathe outside my house because you can smell and you can breathe the very old burning smell. Lydia Ong wants to show the world the consequences. Air is very heavy. Mm. The air is full of dust. And what is that dust? It's from the pollution, the dust from the plastics recycling factory. As we're leaving, fires have started. Oh, now you smell it. The, all of this plastic burning again. We're not going to hang out here long because this is a lot of toxic chemicals going up into the sky. They make their money by recycling. Yes. So why would they dump it and burn it? Cut costs. Turns out only 9% of plastic ends up actually being recycled in Canada. Much of it shipped overseas, classified as something more recyclable than it actually is. We don't want to be the next cancer village. We know there are companies happy to exploit the problem no matter the harm they cause. Another reason for us all to reduce our use of plastic and fight the number two sin on our list, the sin of waste. We're happy to have you with us this evening and want you to enjoy every minute of your stay here. Stick around for our number one sin of the marketplace. It's a real cliffhanger. Find out when we return. Get more Marketplace. Sign up for our weekly newsletter, cbc.ca slash marketplace. reveal our number one sin in the seven sins of the marketplace. 
And this next one is frustrating not only for us as journalists, but for you, the audience, as well. When we work in our stories, we want answers, and we expect the most from our government, but they don't always want to talk. And we consider that our number one sin, the sin of silence. Statements like this one, or this one, or this one. We've been sent so many. They make it seem like government officials are participating, but they don't allow for a true exchange of ideas. And you'd think they'd step up and be interested in your concerns and our investigations. But often, when our questions go unanswered, we show up unannounced. Minister Elliott, I'm David with CBC. Can I just ask you a really quick question about long-term care? Thank you. I'm Asha Tomlinson I... with CBC Marketplace. Yeah, I didn't know you were coming. Actually, yes. contact my press secretary? We've contacted your press secretary several times. We Can just want to talk to you. Would you mind? Is would you okay? Would you speak with us afterwards? I'll be with you in a moment. Okay. How's that? Wonderful. Thank I you. Know you're filming, so. <laughs> Thank you. We provided a statement to Marketplace, and we're not prepared to do it on camera. So we're, we're just trying to get some answers around sexual violence. They're concerned that the school didn't do enough to protect them. We can't speak to specific incidents. So if you are a public official staying silent on public issues, you are guilty of our number one sin, the sin of silence. Our season may be over, but our work is not. We've got your back. And we're going to keep fighting for you. Send us your stories and tell us what you want us to investigate next. And remember that this will forever be your marketplace. Audio file one. Audio file number one. I'm not good at this. <laughs> hmm. Create products or policies with little thought for the environment. It's OK. It wasn't good for me. Whoa. Yes. Yes, it is from the 1950s. <laughs> it's 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 okay, good job, everybody.